Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new, my name is Carol Tichi Karibu <laughs> I know, I know Okay, I have been thinking of switching my Karibu dance and you know I normally do like the lunge shoulder shake but it's not as vigorous as the real Louis do it you know so I've been thinking maybe I should like be switching it up once in a while you know maybe do like the caribou or the, the the bump hey caribou or maybe the I don't know <laughs> you guys you tell me because I do want to like uh, welcome my people when you come to my channel for the first time you get a caribou dance and once upon a time you were a new visitor to my channel and you did get a dance right I'm sorry it wasn't as vigorous as it, I would have wanted it but hey to something so yes other than that I did further chop my hair and if you'd like to see a tutorial on how I did this um, I'll put an eye somewhere so that you can go check that out but yes right now I'm just enjoying my short hair cut yeah so on to today's video today's video is all about ingredients now I have noticed that people do reviews but the, they don't really dive deep into ingredients and for me ingredients is kind of a big deal yes so also if they do make an ingredients video it's kind of scary makes you like want to throw everything that you own and then now what will you use you know so I don't want it to be scary but I want it to be informative and my aim for this video is so that we can all be you and I we can and our small family that is growing on YouTube if, in fact if you haven't subscribed to my channel what are you doing just click on the like I'll put like a, a bubble just click on the bubble and subscribe to my channel so that we can grow together anyway so the point back to the point of this video I want us to be informed consumers know what you're buying know what you're putting onto your skin know what you're putting in your hair and know what you're generally consuming and I'm hoping this will trickle down to also your food and drinks skincare makeup so Generally, when I do a review, I'll be diving deep into ingredients. But for today's video specifically, I want us to go through a rundown of ingredient, a typical ingredients list, or yeah, or a formula. Formula. I also did put up a poll on Instagram in regards to ingredients. I did ask you specifically, how do you feel about having mineral oil in your hair products, makeup, skincare? and um let me just put up the poll over here and then if the results were so close i was shocked i was like what guys don't mind mineral oil in their products so yes that is one of the things that prompted me to do this video because i feel like it's important to know what's in your in your products so that you're consumer informed consumer just like i said before so yes i am so today I want us to run down a typical ingredients list for a hair product. Now this may be for a hair product but in the future when I'm doing any like makeup, skincare, we will still go through the ingredients list so don't worry. This is not just for hair, let's try, cut across everything. So yes, if you'd like to see that then keep on watching. So guys, a little bit of a backstory as to why ingredients are so important to me. Now, when I started off my natural hair journey, I was doing the curly girl method. And that is where I started like being obsessive about ingredients. Because if you know the curly girl method, they're supposed to do, to use two products. One, both of them are rinse out conditioners, by the way. 
so one is supposed to be like um lightweight and then the second one so we wash with the lightweight one or you can they can both be heavy it doesn't matter and the second one is a little bit thick because it's going to be like the styling agent so you just need two conditioners but this, the ingredients in the conditioners they should it's okay to have silicones but not uh silicones that are not water soluble like they can't be washed off by just water you don't want because the whole idea of the caligal method which kind of gave birth to co-washing the whole point is so that you don't use shampoo so if you use an ingredient or a, pr a product that doesn't contain uh, silicones that are not tough and require a shampoo to rinse it out and only can be rinsed out by water then co-washing works great so you're not supposed to use even oils heavy oils you're not supposed to use a bunch of products like you're not supposed to use anything that will make you want to use a shampoo to clean out your hair so that's the whole point so that's why i think that i think it did give birth to co-washing curly girl method gave birth to co-washing so yeah excuse the sun <laughs> it's the one giving me the glow anyway so from there uh i was always when i'm going conditioner shopping i was just there especially if it's a new conditioner because in kenya you, you don't consistently find the conditioner that you normally use so if it's a new conditioner i'm just there at the supermarket aisle just reading and reading and reading 30 minutes 45 minutes an hour i'm just reading the ingredients because i'm like okay i need to be very specific about my ingredients but that made the supermarket attendants just hover around me like vultures like why is this chick taking so long on this aisle she planning to steal or something <sighs> so when i used to go conditioner shopping i was a prime suspect to pickpocket what pickpocketing what is it called shoplifting <laughs> so yeah i was just like i sucked it up i used to tell them i am have to read i have to read my ingredients before i patch it so just give me time but yeah it is not interesting <laughs> so that's that about um hair and then when it came to skincare so for the like for throughout my campus yeah throughout my campus life and i should be like like two years over i used to use the skincare brand that i just put it up here that did contain parabens so i was like oh my god so recently as in when it came out that parabens are not good for you they're carcinogenic i was like wait what <laughs> what <laughs> So I was like, so you mean I've been using parabens for like six years and nobody said nothing. So I see that says like, I need to be very vigilant with what's in my products, what's in my skin, yeah, makeup, everything. Because now what's this, th what is this? Huh? Yeah. So those are the reasons why I was just like, I need to read the ingredients. I need to be doing a, the research for this video did make me learn a lot and i'm here to share with you guys so yes so i do have a question for you guys what kind of a consumer are you so are you the kind of consumer that reads just what's on top of the um product you read um no parabens no mineral oils and uh, nah, contains rice water and then you're like ah, okay buying <laughs> or are you the kind of consumer who's like i will read the first five because the first five are the most the highest percentage in this formula okay or are you the kind of person who only reads through the entire list but only reads what they can pronounce so you glide through the ones that you can't the high the ones that have their scientific names the ones that you can't pronounce you like scratch that you only read the ones that you can pronounce or are you the kind that 
bust out the google search start searching what is this ingredient that i can't pronounce and uh you search out all the ingredients and like hmm, okay let me go with that one oh you already have like an ingredients list screenshot on your phone and like yes this is safe this is no this is not safe you x think <laughs> the product right there and then or you buy it right then and then which kind of a consumer are you so i'm hoping after the video you'll be able to like know what to look out for and what is safe for us to consume yeah, especially in the long run because think about it if you are going to say that a product is your holy grail like you're going to use it for like six years like me you'd rather have be using a, a product that is safe for you yeah so yeah plus w let me just ask you would you um sacrifice your health for a bomb twist out a bomb burn to not out you see performance for me goes hand in hand with how safe the product is i can't uh, neglect the, the safety of the product just because it gives me bomb performance it performs well gives me a bomb result yet so yeah i hope we are together <laughs> So let's dive in guys but before we start I'd like you to pause this video just pause it and go get your favorite product your holy grail and come right back let's kind of break down the ingredients list let's know what's what what's their function what's yeah and also let's know what's safe what's not safe but i'm i'm thinking this video is going to be extra long so today i'm just going to go through the breakdown and then i'll come back with a second video where we get deep into the ingredients and know which, what is safe what's not safe so yes look out for part two for part one we're just going to go down through the list and just know why this ingredient is there or what function it performs in our ingredients in our product in our formula i'd like you to note though that every formula is different or it's unique to itself and every formulator is different so depending on whether the company calls itself natural or organic or they don't claim to be natural or organic the ingredients in the formula will change but there is a typical kind of like a standard formula which we're going to go through today so yes let's start the first ingredient is aqua now what aqua means is deionized or demineralized water so on the list it can be written as aqua or distilled water distillate or purified water so the function of this is just to moisturize you know what water is a moisturizer and not only that it acts as a solvent also because um, many ingredients dissolve in water and water acts as a carrier of the ingredients so yes that's the function of water aqua not water the second ingredient is usually a humectant so you can see something like glycerin or aloe vera gel aloe vera juice or sometimes honey now humectant pulls in moisture from the environment so that's the purpose of it and it locks it in once it pulls it in and locks it in so yes it prevents dryness freeziness and breakage I am checking on my notes guys so when I'm checking down just know I am naibaiba <laughs> so yes it does prevent dryness freeziness and um breakage so yes a humectant is typically number two on the list third on the list are emulsifiers now if you know from or if you remember uh, our chemistry in high school now emulsifiers are meant to mix water and oil together because you know they don't mix on a normal situation they don't mix so emulsification is a process where oil and water mix yes so emulsifiers i put a list so that you can tell from your list of ingredients if you've grabbed have you grabbed your favorite ingredient <laughs> anyway so yes and number four is a surfactant now depending on whether you're 
product is a cleanser or a conditioning agent or a deep conditioner or a co-wash depending on what it is a surfactant is a cleaning agent so you can have a sulfate free or a sulfate ingredient those are under surfactants yeah so depending on is it a cleanser then it does have a surfactant then you check is it a sulfate or a sulfate free surfactant yeah so that's when you'll be able to tell whether you want to buy this product or not yeah Number five are emollients. So this is a, these are ingredients that give a product its consistency, smoothness, softness. Now this can be natural oils, natural butters. They can be mineral oil or mineral oil derivatives. So yes, all these are just put a list. All these are emollients meant to make your product actually meant to make your hair smooth soft that's the purpose of it so yeah the emollients number six and this is depending this is dependent on what kind of product you have or what kind of a product is being formulated now if it's a a protein conditioner then it's going to have hydrolyzed protein now hydrolyzed protein are protein that has been broken down into like its component amino acids and therefore they're making it easy to penetrate into the hair shaft by making it small you remember uh, some guys saying that egg eggs don't work as a uh, an effective protein treatment because their molecules are too big they cannot penetrate into the hair shaft now having a hydrolyzed wheat or hydrolyzed silk or hydrolyzed soy protein in your protein deep conditioner means that you have a very effective protein that will penetrate your hair shaft so yeah yes we get are we getting somewhere this ingredients list yeah so i'll put examples of hydrolyzed protein here so that you can tell what is in your in your products number eight are silicones and silicones are polymers which provide Sleep in a product, especially like conditioner and uh, a detangler. Yeah, so it does provide sleep, gives the appearance of a smooth, silky hair. Now, some people don't like this because they're like, oh, this is like fake moisturized hair. It like gives you an illusion of fake moisture or fake moisturized hair, and they would prefer like other like non-silicone ingredients but silicones depending on which one you use remember i said like they are good and they are good and bad silicones so but there's some people who are not um opposed to sulfate shampoos because some silicones do require sulfate to wash off so some people are not opposed to sulfate shampoos so for them they are free to pick and choose from a wide variety but if you are you have to be very specific with the silicone that you want to play around with now uh silicones are very effective especially when it comes to like uh a heat protectant as a heat protectant it does coat your hair and seals it off and kind of that is the protection that it that a heat protectant gives it gives sufficient amount of silicones to coat your hair and protect it from heat or heat damage yeah so there are some pros and cons you just have to know when to use them and why you're using them And that's the reason why I don't straighten my hair so much because I do use a silicone heat protectant and that means I have to use a sulfate shampoo of which I don't use a sulfate shampoo so often because a sulfate shampoo dries out your hair so yes kind of like it goes hand in hand heat dries out your hair and then then you put a shampoo drying out your hair so that's why placing heat on my hair is not something that I do so often Moving on to number nine, which are gelatin in agent. Now, gelatin agent is an agent that binds in with the, the metal ions and which other ions? Yeah, grabs the metal ions from water. And uh, what it does is, yes, it grabs anything, any of the metal ions that may have not been 
purified or may have just gotten into the formula so a gelatin agent does that it grabs the iron but it remains neutral to the point where it doesn't um, it doesn't react with other ingredients it just stays like what does it stay it stays mute it stays muted it doesn't react with other ingredients now what that does to a formula it makes it stable so yes if it's stable it aids in stability of the formula so yes that's what a gelatin product is and i'll put examples so that you know this the purpose of this in my in my product is to do this okay. number 10 is fragrance natural fragrance or essential oils again depending on what kind of brand it is so for fragrances they are meant to from what i know they're meant to mask some other smells from other ingredients because some other smells are not so pleasant so a fragrance does mask the smells and also the fragrance or essential oils do uh, give the product a distinct smell a distinct scent so when you smell it you just know mm, this is a specific brand or a specific product from a specific brand you know that gives that like footprint kind of thing and i also don't disclose the ingredients for their fragrances because it's regarded as like a company secret like a trade secret you see but yes we'll dive that deep into that on the second segment so yeah the eleventh ingredient are extracts. So extracts to me are just like something special that is put in the product because I find them to be very nourishing and um, yeah. So that that extra special thing that is added into your formula or into your ingredients list. So extracts draw out or bring out or take out, remove from leaves, flowers seeds the active ingredient an active ingredient from the leaves flower seeds and from all that the substance that is extracted is usually like a really you can find you will find that excess are a very small percentage in your formula but it's because they're very concentrated so extracts are very concentrated they are i think close to like um essential oils i guess but yes they are very concentrated yeah so if you see an extract in your product then that's something to smile about and last but not least number 12 are preservatives now preservatives are there to prevent um, the product from going bad so it prevents spoilage it prevents the degradation of the product because it might like grow some bacteria, fungi, microbial, microbial growth, or it might have like a chemical reaction, yeah, a chemical change. So a preservative prevents that. And um, from here, you can we will learn on the second segment, which are the safe preservatives, which are not. So yes, ha. Huh. So, but I'll just put up some. Um, example of preservatives here so that you can go through your ingredients and you can know like oh these are this is the preservative segment of the ingredient list so yeah that's that's the list guys so how how do you feel about now knowing what's exactly in your ingredients list and now we, you are ready for the second segment where we just dive deep and to kagoe what is in our products yeah <laughs> so thank you guys for watching if you haven't subscribed please subscribe definitely share this with your people it's important to know what's in your product list and yeah see you on the next one bye